What's up guys, Flaming Geek here. How to nail the jet interview, partie 2. In this part, I will be talking about the difficult questions that may be presented to you during this interview process, as well as the teaching component. Guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you are applying to the JET program, feel free to message me. I will answer all of your questions. This is part two. Let's get to it. For part two of the interview, you need to remember that the interview is usually 20 to 25 minutes. So the way how it tends to be structured is the first 10, five or 10 minutes will be the easier questions and then gradually they'll get more difficult. Some people have a 20 minute interview, some people have 25 minutes. I would say try to aim to be one of the 25 minute people. That usually means that the panel wants to talk to you a little bit longer, they're a little bit more interested in you, or it could mean that your interview is just running a little bit slower. Um, but you'll find that the interview is very structured, so stay to the point. Do not ramble at all in these interviews. You want to be as clear and as concise as possible. This will also show the panel that you do have a good grasp of the English language. The ability to communicate and get to the point. Demonstration of good English. I went and brought this notepad into the interview. I will talk about this in part three of my series on the jet interview process, which will be talking about appearances and how to hold yourself in the interview. So anyways, what's so important about this? In this book, I brought this into the interview and I went and wrote down at the end of the interview, all of the questions that they asked me. I also kept in this book my three questions that I asked the alumni. So I will get to that. I highly recommend when you're preparing for this part of the interview process, please go to Tofugu. Tofugu, I've put the link in the descriptions below. Tofugu, I cannot stress how good it is. Um, there, they have several articles on the JET program application process. Everyone who wrote them, they are former alumni of the JET program. I've also linked down below some other forums and you can see sort of some questions that people were asked. I cannot stress when you are preparing for the difficult questions, do not go and look at other people's answers. Don't do that. The reason being is you do not want to come across in the interview that you're not being as genuine. They want your answers to be as genuine as possible, a good representation of yourself. So for example, you don't want to answer a question like this. What would you bring to Japan to represent your home country? You don't want to say three things that I would bring to Japan to represent Canada. No, 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 no. You don't want to answer the question like that. So the questions that I'll be using in this video are questions that I was personally asked just to give you guys an idea of what the questions sound like. And I'll give you a general idea of what my answers were sort of based upon or how to work the question. So first question I was asked right off the bat, what would you bring to Japan to represent Canada? So when I did my interview February 9th, 2017, because 2018 was coming up, I talked about um, how I could represent Canada through the Olympics. I talked about how I would represent Canada by wearing Canadian Olympic gear and showing my students sort of winter sports in Canada and why Canada is known for for doing really well at the, the Winter Olympics. I was very fortunate that July 1st of 2017 was Canada's 150th anniversary, which was obviously a big moment of national pride. And I mentioned how I would present that to my students and show them like Canada is a very young country. Japan is a country that dates back thousands of years and has ingrained cultural identities and history, whereas Canada is built up with lots of multiculturalism, lots of different cultures and languages and history and backgrounds building the foundation of Canada. To me, that's something unique that I could present to Japanese students. So you wanna kind of answer your question like that. You can represent your country by bringing omiyage, by showing them pictures or videos of your home country, stuff like that. I also mentioned that I would try to incorporate Canada into my lessons. So showing the kids games that we would use to learn English in Canada, activities that we did to accomplish certain things, traditions that we had in Canada, holidays that we celebrated stuff like that second question I got asked was what makes a good ALT you are guaranteed to get this question 
They want to see how you view this position. When you are given this question, try to think of what ALT stands for. Assistant language teacher. In general, you are an assistant. You are there to add foundation and bring first-hand experience in that native tongue to the position for the JTE, your Japanese teacher of English. You're there to be an additional resource. That's your job. You want to think of qualities that you can, about yourself that you can present to them based on this question. I went and talked about like, I'm a hard worker. I'm known to be a hard worker. I speak multiple languages. I could relate to the students that way. Third question I got asked, how would you be successful through difficult times? In terms of hard times, just try to think of how you manage stress. This is gonna be a key question. You won't, you won't be in your native country. You will at some point go through culture shock. Being an ALT can be a little bit tough on people, especially around holidays or family members' birthdays and such like stuff, times like that. It's a little bit more difficult. You're in a country where for some people you may speak the language, for many of you, you might not speak the language at all. So whether that is seeing like kanji written everywhere and hearing people speak to you in Japanese, it might be a little overwhelming. So you wanna think of how you manage stress. The next question I got asked, it's a big one for me is, how will you manage your mental health? This could be asked to anyone, but in my application, I went and I was pretty honest. I, I, I have um, severe general anxiety disorder. I have clinical depression and I have chronic insomnia. So I don't sleep very much. I sleep usually two hours a day. I know it's not a lot. Sometimes if I'm really lucky, I'll sleep four hours and Obviously, this is a question to be asked about my performance. So what I told them was like, I manage my mental illnesses through, I take medication, I do therapy. So I told them like, I would have to find a psychiatrist or a psychologist here. I work well when I integrate myself into a community, into an area. So I would try to be as involved as possible, you know, keeping things that I like to do. So whether that is playing video games, making videos, going on adventures and exploring, stuff like that. The next question I got asked was piercing. You guys may notice I have several piercings. Uh, when I wrote my application and when I did my interview, at that point, I had 20 piercings. <laughs> so when I went into my interview, obviously I had my septum piercing flipped up. And my septum piercing flipped up. I had, as you can see, I had clear piercings put into my nose. I only had my lobe piercings in. Straight up, I was asked this question by the Japanese uh, professor. She said, teachers, aren't supposed to have piercings. You'll notice when you're here, not a lot of Japanese men or women have piercings, especially like in Western culture and even European culture, like earlobe piercings for girls are pretty common and people don't really think much of it. But students in Japan, like I can tell you, they lose their minds when they see that I have like two piercings in. I told them the great thing about piercings is you can take them out and you can put them back in. Or, you know, if the hole closes up, when I come back to Canada, I'll just get another piercing. But I did tell them for me, mine was also a special circumstance. Um, a lot of my piercings are put at areas where the nerves are. So um, it helps manage one of my other medical conditions. How will you handle difficult teachers or students? Ultimately, you wanna think of is you're an assistant teacher. If you have a difficult teacher, you can first approach them about the situation, obviously, then go to your supervisor. And then if that doesn't work out, go talk to you your ALT coordinators or um, someone who you can trust, like a BOE member. When you're managing difficult students, this is a trick question. It's a little bit of a difficult question. You are an assistant language teacher. It's not your job to discipline students. That's the JTE's job. So if you're dealing with a very tricky student who is disrupting the class and such, you let the JTE deal with that circumstances. The Japanese teachers are certified Japanese teachers. You are an assistant. You are not certified by the Japanese government to be handling anything very substantially difficult. There you go. How will you manage your physical health? This also came up in my interview. I have a brain disorder. I have a brain disorder, unfortunately. And so that was one of my bigger concerns as well when I applied to this was whether or not if I'd be able to manage my brain condition but my doctors were able to show that actually Japan would be actually a better reason for me to move there. 
So for this question, if you do have a health concern, just you can stress again at this point, you would prefer to be at a placement where you are near hospital. This question isn't meant for the interviewees to automatically say no and fail you in this interview process. They genuinely are concerned about your health. You'll find when you're here, um, Japanese people are very concerned about your health. Even if I cough in class because like it's dry or something, or if I sneeze, then everyone all of a sudden is like, oh my gosh, are you sick? Ashuri sensei are you okay? Oh no! They really do care about your health and obviously health is a number one priority. You will be living in a foreign country where medical processes may be very different from yours. You'll have the addi additional stress of you're living abroad, you're not at home, you're not, you don't have that additional support system. This was a big one. How will you help students with low level English or students who are reluctant to participate in class? Best way to think of this is even nowadays when I have students like that, I go and I try to find what these students like. I find out, I ask them if they're in any sports teams or if they like manga or movies or something. You can always find something that's common ground and you slowly, slowly work into it. You'll find here that Japanese students, when they don't want to participate in something, at least for elementary and junior high, they just shut down. There's one student who literally sleeps in the entire class and it's very frustrating, but there's nothing I can do about it. What I do is I just try my best to support him, <laughs> to make English seem as interesting as possible. That's your job, bring fun games. And eventually I guarantee you, you will find something that will pique the interest of the student. How will you handle a disagreement with your JTE? This is a big one, big one, and you will probably get asked this question but the key to answering this question is in the titles assistant language teacher Japanese teacher of English you are an assistant language teacher that is your job you're an assistant so obviously say you're disagreeing about how this one how this one vocabulary word or concept is going to be taught you would obviously come to them and tell them tell them why it should be taught this way if the JTE disagrees with you you have to fall back on what they say they are the teacher, They are. it's their class. It's unfortunate, but that's your job. If it's something more severe where it's gonna clash and cause significant issues, then you would approach your supervisor about that. You would go through the correct channels to get over that situation. Next, you might be asked to do a teaching section. I was fortunate enough that I wasn't outright asked to teach, but you might not be either. Don't expect them to be like, please teach us this. Sometimes it might be how they word it. So for example, I was asked, I play Quidditch. University, I played Quidditch, went to tournaments and stuff. Yes, I have a trading card. I was asked, what's Quidditch? That was the last question I was asked. What's Quidditch? I could have said Quidditch is a fictional sport from Harry Potter. But what I did was I went and I approached the question as though one of my students was asking me. So when you're asked a question like this, you wanna think of how for teaching, you want to build a foundation from vocabulary so that the students understand what it is you're teaching. So for what I did was I said, Quidditch is from the movie and books Harry Potter. Do you know Harry Potter? And everyone's like, yes, I do. Okay, so in Quidditch, it's a sport. It's a sport. In Quidditch, you have three, three hoops. Hoops. You have four balls. You get the point. I taught it to them like that. When you get to the teaching component, if you are asked to teach something, don't be afraid to stand up and pretend that you are talking, you're teaching a class. Be enthusiastic, be engaging, because they wanna see how you will act on the spot, how you improvise, because this sometimes happens in school, where a teacher will come up to you five minutes before class being like, oh, can you teach the students about sports? Can you teach the students about English games? Can you teach the students about colors? And you have five minutes to think of an activity and how you're gonna teach something. Bam, go. It does happen. So they're gonna be looking at your ability to improvise and your ability to approach difficult situations and teach appropriately. So one of my friends got asked, how do you play soccer? She went, stood up in front of the panel and went and discussed key vocabulary terms about soccer. Don't hesitate to stand up or even ask, engage your audience, engage them. You can ask them like, do you know soccer? Or do you play soccer? 
they'll be looking for that. Try to set yourself apart from everyone else who's applying. The last thing I got asked was with the, to interact with the Japanese professor. So I was asked to speak some Japanese with the Japanese professor. Now, my Japanese language before I moved to Japan was mostly ingrained in what I'd learned in anime and what I read in manga. But before your interview, you want to know at least some basic Japanese so they can see, okay, they put the time in, they are willing to learn Japanese, they're willing to adapt to their environment. The professor, she went and introduced herself to me in Japanese and I was like, okay, okay. And you will have someone on the panel who will translate for you as well. Um, they'll ask you, do you understand? And if you say no, they will translate it to you and see if you can reply. If you can't speak an ounce of Japanese, please just know how to say, hello, my name is this. So I would advise that you know basic Japanese like this. Konnichiwa, watashi no namae wa ashuri desu. Kanada karakimashita. Sportsu ga suki desu. Stuff like that. You basically want to know how to say your name, where you're from, um, where you're from, what you like, just easy questions like that. She also asked me like what I like to do on the weekends, to which I basically told her I like to see movies and I like to play games. So don't freak out, do not freeze up, especially if you're a beginner at Japanese. Don't freeze up, just remain calm and as long as you know how to say hello, what your name is, and one interesting thing about yourself in Japanese, you will be fine. Do not go into the interview from the night before, staying up all night, trying to learn Japanese. Just as long as you know your name and where you're from and something you like, that's enough for the beginner. I cannot speak from firsthand if you do speak Japanese. If you speak a lot more Japanese, obviously this portion of the interview will be a little bit more difficult but honestly just stay calm smile a lot smile a lot and maintain eye contact with them when i was asked by the teacher to introduce them introduce myself to her i went and i shook her hand and i also bowed um because you know in canada or Western culture, when you meet someone new, you usually shake their hand. And I wanted to show that, and I bowed also because, you know, in J Japanese, it's a sign of respect. So you wanna go into the interview, just be calm, smile a lot, smile, laugh, be funny. You wanna show that you're different, but you're there to have fun as well. I would highly recommend guys, like don't go and, seriously, don't go and look up answers to the questions that you will be asked. Just practice. Practice, write down a whole bunch of difficult questions that you may potentially be asked. Go and check out those forums to see if, um, see different questions people were asked. Do not look at how they answered. Think of how you will answer this question. Every answer will be different to how somebody else answers it and you don't want to be representing someone else you want to be representing yourself but ultimately have fun in this interview it's a once in a lifetime opportunity don't panic have fun in your interview you're going to meet some amazing people so that's all for today guys next week's video i will talk about appearances and how to present yourself in the interview because there is a way to present yourself and to set yourself apart from everyone else and show how unique you are um if you liked this video feel free to like comment and subscribe to my channel and as always live long and prosper hey guys thanks for watching if you like this video go check out my last one you can also follow me on instagram twitter facebook and snapchat live long and prosper